Alrighty, what is Prop J? Prop J is a parcel tax for the San Francisco Unified School District. All right, back on the floor here. The way it is now, San Francisco Unified School District educates about 54,000 students and employs 6,900 teachers. In 2018, a majority of San Francisco voters approved an annual parcel tax to provide funding to the school district. Uh, as of July 1st, 2020, the tax rate is $320 per parcel of taxable property with an adjustment for inflation each year. The 2018 school parcel tax expires on June 30, 2038. Uh, the money that is collected, the school district can use it to increase salaries for teachers and other employees, increase staffing and funding at high need schools and community schools, provide professional development, invest in technology, including digital learning and fund public charter schools. If you're over age 65, you are exempt from this tax if they own an interest in the property being taxed and if the property is where they live most of the time. 2018 school parcel tax has been challenged in court and the money collected through this tax may or may not be available to the school district depending on the outcome of the lawsuit. So uh, the main points is that there was something passed in 2018 um, tax rate is $320 per parcel. And the specific uh, definition of um, parcel, you know, I don't have the verbatim for you, but it's, um, I imagine it's every, every lot. Uh, okay, so, and this uh, parcel tax is not forever, but it is for a very long time, 18 more years. This money is, I is being collected, but it's not being distributed right now because Actually, I think uh, we have an update. Anna, um, Anna provided us an update the other day, and she works at the controller's office. So, yeah, I'm inclined to believe her that the, uh, you know, went through um, at least one one court, and you know, the, um, the loser always appeals. But what Anna shared was that the appeal, um, the court that would have heard the appeal, declined to hear it. And so the the lower court's uh, ruling stands, and I believe that means that that is the end of the, the legal challenge. And so uh, it would appear that this 2018 parcel tax is good to go. Okay, but it's 2020, we have Prop J in front of us. What does this specific proposition do? Well, this will amend the, the law to repeal the annual parcel tax that passed in 2018 and implement a, a new tax. It will be replaced with a $288 annual parcel tax, which is about $30 cheaper than the previous tax. Um, and the school district We'll use this for purposes related to teachers' pay and educational improvements. So this is some background on the, uh, the hearing, I guess. Previous year, the California Supreme Court ruled that tax measures placed on the ballot by signatures required only a simple majority to pass instead of the two-thirds majority required for special taxes in California. Prop G, which was the uh, 2018 one, passed with 61% of the vote which is not a two-thirds majority. A two-thirds majority is 66 and two-thirds percent. Uh, here's Prop G is currently in litigation over the voter threshold used to approve it. And so the city has been collecting, it's unable to spend the funds. Um, as a result, the district has used rainy day reserves and funding appropriated from the city general fund to pay for uh, teachers and employees raises for three years. All right. Okay, the fiscal impact is that if it is approved, the controller believes, it would generate tax revenues of approximately $48.1 million annually. Similar to the tax it would be replacing, the funds generated would be dedicated for teachers, salaries, staffing, and other purposes within the school district. Voting yes would support authorizing this parcel tax of $288 per parcel adjusted for inflation to, to replace the existing parcel tax. Voting no would, therefore we would be depending on the 2018 measure 
to uh, provide some funding for our schools. Really quick, if there are no questions on the background so far, we can try to find some hard links um, that'll tell us whether or not that that uh, the status of the litigation. But yeah, let's go over these arguments in favor. Uh, this argument is uh, con uh, concerning the pandemic. Our city faces unprecedented challenges caused by the pandemic and budget shortfalls uh, will severely hurt our city schools. These issues have been compounded by the need for new methods of distance learning and precautions. So the increased costs of um, dealing with the pandemic is an argument that says our schools need money and this is a way to provide money. I should double check. I'm pretty sure that this measure here requires two thirds to pass and therefore it would be kind of immune to the same legal challenges as the previous um, opposition. And so that's one of the arguments that the money will come faster. Argument number two, supporting teachers. Of course, teachers are very important. They deserve to be paid a living wage and our school district must be able to offer competitive compensation so that San Francisco can attract and retain quality educators. Today, many of our schools are understaffed because neighboring districts can uh, offer higher salaries and lower cost of living. Funds collected through Prop J will be spent entirely to improve the school district. None of the funds can be taken by the state or federal government. And there will be some oversight that does annual auditing to ensure that all the funds are spent as promised. So it's kind of a two part argument here. One is simply that teachers are very valuable and we need to uh, be competitive. And secondly, that this, this money is appropriated. And so addressing the concern for people believe that the money will be misspent or there won't be any oversight. Our third argument in favor of this proposition is that it will develop education programs. It'll allow our schools to modernize, invest in technology for digital learning that will be vital for education in the COVID-19 era. Prop J will ensure that our schools have the tools required to continue providing a safe, high quality education. Prop J will also fund professional development for teachers and staff, strengthening computer science programs, technology programs, so that uh, our students are ready to excel in this uh, up and coming global economy. Essentially saying that the money will be spent for good things that, that we all probably want. We'll pause here for a second if anyone has any comments regarding or questions regarding the three arguments in favor. Going once, going twice. Uh, yes. Vote this for Bowden. Vote this for Bowden. That's right. My comment. Against this proposition. Some say that it's unfair because it taxes all real estate parcels the same value, which is, I think, $288 again whether it's the Salesforce building or a two bedroom house in the mission. Yeah, so that goes to the definition of parcel, which, you know, is pretty, doesn't uh, discriminate against whether it's a really nice building or a really crappy building. And so in essence, taxing these different properties the same, some people, the po opponents will argue that it is a regressive tax hurting the poor disproportionately to the rich. Argument number two against that it is destined to fail. This prop hopes to repeal an already legally contested act. The previous act should have required two thirds majority, but it only surpassed with a simple majority. And so it's saying the history of this was that in 2018, it didn't achieve a two thirds. And so this proposition being so similar to that 2018 proposition, which did not get two thirds. This doesn't get two thirds anyways, and therefore you should vote no on that. That is the logic of this argument here. The final argument against this proposition is that it is not a permanent solution. This measure will expire in 17 years if there's no significant support from other investment areas. So this is only temporary to a long-term issue that needs much more help than this provides such as multi-year budget deficits and growth in pension and healthcare liabilities. It's actually saying that this is not the perfect solution and therefore we should try to come up with something better. Let's go over the rebuttals really quick. 
So in response to the idea that the money is needed to pay for costs related to the pandemic is uh, saying that the funds may be misused. In light of pandemic and additional resources needed, proposed uses of these additional funds may not be the most urgent or highest priority. We can try to think about um, this argument here that uh, this is expressing a lack of trust in the administration to use the funds for what is most urgent or highest priority. Why don't we open it up on each uh, rebuttal and that's how we'll do our discussion today. What do people think about, about, about this argument here or in general, the, the argument in general about whether the money will be spent well on distance learning stuff, things related to COVID, any initial thoughts? Doesn't it expressively or explicitly say on the bill itself what where the money is going? Good question. Um, like for example, thirty three percent goes to teacher salary and twenty percent goes to whatever, whatever. Question. I'm looking at my voter guide right now. Uh, feel free to peruse the uh, online resources if you are here researching this in real time i think we'll have to look at the, the legal text to find the real yeah let me pull it up good stuff here you know my initial uh, response to this type of argument here is that even if these funds here are um, you know earmarked for very specific uses, the school district and the school board, you know, this isn't their only source of funding. And you know, depending on what you know or think about the administrators, you may believe that you know they're smart enough to use these funds for those specific uses that they have to, and then uh, you know, use other more general funds to cover the other areas of concern which um, in this argument against talks about uh, suggesting that there are more urgent or higher priority things than the COVID measures, etc. So real quick, let's see if we can answer Carmen's question here. H. Prop J. Here we go, section 3709, exp expenditure of proceeds. Let's see. Okay, these funds shall be used exclusively for the following purposes. Up to 1% of the proceeds for administration of the, okay, administrative costs to administrate the educators. Educators partial tax. Uh, refund any overpayments, okay, all remaining amounts transferred to the school district, which shall use these proceeds only for the following purposes, with the school district having sole discretion as to allocation. One is raising salaries, two is raising salaries of paraeducators, three is uh, increased uh, staffing, increased staffing, uh, E, provide additional professional development. I mean, this is already quite, uh, quite broad, um, in my opinion. Investing in 21st century technology, allocating funds to public charter schools, provide oversight. So that's the end of the list. If there's a, all the, uh, what about about seven, eight items? So, I mean, what do people think? Is this a broad enough uh, range of possible uses to, or perhaps the, um, the rebuttal here is saying that it's too broad and it might be misused saying that perhaps item B is more important than item D and they don't trust the administrators to make that distinction. Yeah, I think I think they maybe should have explicitly said we're going to allot 15% to this and 10% to that just to make it more explicit. I but I wouldn't be I'm I'm not opposed to this bill. Mm -hmm. I'm just I think if there was an improvement, we would improve it by explicitly saying, okay, 10% goes to this or 15% goes to that. Yeah, that uh, would make, oh, go ahead, sorry. 
Well, I don't know if it was already said, but I think one of the things that was explicitly dictated with this proposition is um, there was a union negotiation with the teachers union. And so 7% uh, or like a specific portion of the, the money that comes from this tax will be used to pay for 7% salary increases for district teachers. So if you want to give Bowdoin a raise, then you should vote yes on this proposition. Mm. But if you think he doesn't deserve it, then you should vote no. There you go. And so, yeah, um, this this proposition, you know, it doesn't say like in the hard writing, but the uh, teachers union seems to have negotiated something with the um, school district. And, you know, maybe you don't think that's the best way to do it. Maybe you'd rather have it in the hard writing of the law. And so is that enough for you to vote no on it? Um, who knows? Some people, maybe. Um, anybody uh, on the line think, uh, finds that that point specifically is enough to make you vote no on it, that it's not written out clearly 10% to raises, 20% to technology, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, then we won't uh, belabor the point here. Let me go to the next slide. Rebuttal to argument number two for the proposition. Argument, this argument says that it's uh, about supporting teachers, which is uh, what William brought up just now. And the rebuttal to this is that it's not good enough. Um, so they're, you know, they're not re re refuting the fact that we should support teachers because I don't know if anyone would say that, uh, but they're saying that it's not doing good enough. Research shows that investing in teachers and reducing turnover can improve student outcomes, particularly for students of color. Investments in the school district educators, like those funded by this tax, could benefit the city's public school systems who are especially low income and children of color. However, teacher pay increases alone would not be enough to close the district's significant disparity gaps. Right, so this is a relatively straightforward. Um, you are, if you are a all or nothing type of person and you, you think that, uh, you know, a small step maybe is just not good enough to vote for and you're waiting for something that's a lot more drastic then you are inclined to vote no on this um anybody on the line is uh sympathetic to this type of thinking well i'm curious like um you said that this is going to repeal proposition g from 2018 and made it make it litigation proof but did uh you, you also said that the the lawsuit against prop g failed right is that true correct yeah so um, I think these slides were uh, uh, made um, prior to uh, either that decision or, you know, hearing that news. Um, we, we should spend a few minutes trying to find like a news article or something confirming that. But, yeah, uh, I was trying to look for one, but I couldn't find one. All I found were like really old, like articles from last year, just saying like, oh, it's in the courts now. But if it okay. is, um, if uh, Prop G is now like free and clear, then I feel like I would want to vote against this proposition because it does lower taxes ever so slightly and that's less money for schools and stuff, right? I feel like that kind of changes. Exactly, that. yeah. Agreed. Yeah, once I heard, sorry, sorry go ahead. Well, no, I, I said I agree. Oh. Yeah, um, after hearing, uh, and I'll, I'll, let me pull up what uh, Anna sent over. So Anna sent over, um, and I wish I could link this easily really quick for you guys. Um, this is a uh, from the court court website, the California courts, and so this wait, is a uh, send, send it to me on. Like, it, okay, uh, look in the uh, Facebook chat. Yeah, and then I'll just share it with everyone. Um, but let me let me continue. It was a. Uh, it's showing the case numbers. Uh, the case is San Francisco City and County versus all persons interested in the matter of Prop C. Oh, hang on, this is proxy. This isn't the right one. Okay, so if we want, we'll spend a few minutes going on the court website and trying so we to don't, find- We don't know for sure. No. Well, I guess, I guess, I guess then I would be a supporter of Prop J because it's like litigation proof. Yeah, that, that's a great point. Um, of course, if it was settled, then you know this proposition is kind of a moot point but let's just assume that it's not for now because we can't find any news articles um and therefore that's something Bowdoin brought up um this is immediate money if it does pass 
And um, the teachers union is, uh, you know, endorsing a yes vote on this, even though the, the number value is a little lower than the 2018 measure. Yeah, I feel like they lowered the amount only enough in order to make it sound like they're lowering taxes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's very much just sort of like a token decrease in the amount. Yeah, it's like 30 bucks per year. So. It's basically as if we have to vote on the same proposition, uh, mm -hmm. like another election. All right, let's, uh, this next slide is, uh, clearly not completed but we can discuss so developing education programs um if anyone has can think of an argument against this this argument or a rebuttal um someone might say yeah go ahead i'm curious like what's up with like public charter schools it said that some of the money would go to public charter schools and i don't know what those are or like i don't know which public where they are in the city does that include the one that's on like Geary Street? I don't know if that's public charter. I don't know what the difference between public and private charter is in the way that it's carried out. Like how many are there of each? That's a great point. Um, I don't know if anyone on the line, I know I don't have the answer to that question. Um, uh, does anybody yeah. know, like there's that school, uh, I think it's like Kip or something and it's across from the pool near Japantown, but it's on Geary Street. Is that a public charter school? I think it's a charter school, but I don't know if it's public. Is uh, Mr. Bozell on the line? <laughs> uh, not not sure. Uh, I don't know if we can Google that. It's got um, those cool like mosaic tiles on it and stuff. That's definitely a place where someone could disagree um, with the proposition. Maybe they don't want, they believe in public education so much that they don't want any public money going to charter schools for whatever reasons. And that is a uh, definitely a can of worms. It's a whole discussion. Um, Apparently KIPP Bayview Academy, KIPP SF Bay Academy, KIPP SF College Prep, they're all charter schools. Are they public charter? Uh, it's on the SF USD um, website. Oh, okay, they're probably public charter. Does that include Gateway? Um, Let's see. Yes. Okay, cool. Money would go to them. All right. Yeah, that's that's fine, I guess. Gateway High School, Gateway Middle School. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah, I think the uh, the concept of the, the charter schools, especially uh, public charter schools, is that they're places for um, kind of experimentation with different uh, teaching methods and curriculum to a smaller uh, student body. Uh, and so you know, instead of totally changing up for the majority of um, the school districts, these places where different styles of teaching or, or what have you can be explored. So I would definitely like to know the inside scoop on those. If Bowden uh, knows anything, yeah. although Bowden's not here now. So. Um, can anyone else uh, think of a, a rebuttal to this argument? Uh, about that it will develop education programs, uh, you know, curriculum, said technology, coding, stuff like that. I mean, it's hard to argue against it. So um, there are no thoughts on this. Let's uh, move on to the next slide here. Okay, uh, rebuttal to the arguments against. So this was the one, this argument was saying that this tax is regressive because the tax is, you know, uh, properties that are, hugely valuable versus properties that are less valuable, the same amount. It's a straight dollar amount. Um, let's see, let's read this. This measure is aimed to aim to start giving teachers and schools more funding, especially in this time of need. Tax amount has already been lowered, so it should appeal to a more wider population. So saying that the, uh, the amount has been lowered and that is, um, you know, I don't know if folks uh, believe that the amount lowered is significant enough to make people say, you know, it's so low that, you know, it's a moot point, uh, whether or not everyone's being taxed the same. What are people, is this uh, argument, you know, does this trouble people when people want to say the rich should pay more, the, the, the poor should pay less? Um, what are people's thoughts on this one?
for me it's kind of a yeah it's definitely true it'd be nicer to to tax um you know more valuable properties more uh but we already have i guess um, property taxes that that are obviously percentages of assessed value so this is more of a you know seems to be a supplemental small kind of side piece type of tax and so yeah if you you know it's not if you were super diehard about that point you know this isn't ideal but um so the amount is not too crazy and it is of course um to education so for me i clearly don't believe that you know this is a, something to uh yeah, we vote no against the proposition. Anyone feel uh, similarly or uh, differently? Uh, Jenny, you wanted to say something? Oh, okay. Uh, she's good. All right. Anybody? Okay. Going once, going twice. All right. Okay, the argument that it's going to fail because it didn't even get two thirds last time, and that was only two years ago. Let's see what we can respond with. See above, tax amount has been lowered, and so it should appeal to more voters, and that will probably, you know, get us above that threshold. That's very interesting. Okay, so what we're talking about here is whether or not you think something is going to pass or fail. Should how much does that is that supposed to affect your vote on the merits of the prop proposition? In what circumstances do we base our vote on whether or not the thing will pass or not? It's a question of, uh, if we're talking about candidates, for example, electability, you know, which is an interesting conversation. Um, do you vote your ideals or do you try to foresee what's gonna happen and then somehow, you know, vote, you know, base your vote on that? Any thoughts on the line? I feel like this argument is just because it failed last time doesn't mean that you can't put it on again because this is not this proposition is not exactly the same as prop g from 2018 so i think uh this argument is weak yeah i feel like it's a strange discussion i know i understand that this is a rebuttal to the argument claiming that this thing can't pass therefore you can't you shouldn't vote for it this is rebutting it saying like it's more likely to pass therefore you should vote for it but i feel like this whole thing with electability kind of doesn't apply to um these particular ballot measures i think you know electability applies to primary candidates because they're going into two different elections they're they have to be voted for in the primary election and then they have to go to the general election with a different electorate mm -hmm. different circumstances but th these propositions only go get voted on like once or I guess in this case, it's getting voted on a second time because it's technically the same thing as what we voted on two years ago. But yeah, yeah I don't know. It's a weird discussion. I mean, if someone was passionate about this argument against, you know, I'd love to hear it because, you know, seems to for for the room here, it seems like yeah, we're not connecting the dots. Why it might fail, therefore you should vote no for the proposition. You know, I mean, the dots aren't connecting for myself. I don't know about other people. Comments on this slide here. Go on once, go on twice. Next, but to the argument number three against that it's not a permanent solution. COVID, and let's see, COVID is now it says this is not meant to be a permanent solution to all the issues that are involved with the school district and its funding. This can always be amended and further developed to do that. Right now, during COVID, our teachers uh, need help, but the other money is being held up in court. And yeah, um, you know, there are people uh, working full time trying to get more funding for the school district. And the idea that this is not a permanent solution, is that enough for someone to vote no on a quick, um, and as it's framed, maybe emergency backfill funding? I feel like the fact that it's not permanent is, uh, an ar you could make an argument in favor of it. It's mm -hmm. like, if you're making it permanent, then like the taxes will be permanent. People don't like taxes. So it's kind of, in, I think it's an argument in favor of it that it's not permanent because we don't know what the economy will look like in the 2030s. So then when, when we get to there, we can change it. 
increase it or decrease it, let it sunset, whatever. So the fact that it's not permanent makes it a good thing, I feel like. Yeah, uh, uh, this this argument against really brings up a, a great point that it's, I mean, I, I don't know what the, the benefits of it being 18 years is because yeah, it's pretty awkward. It's like, it's not super short term, but then again, it's not definitely not a permanent solution. So I don't know, it's a little, it's a little strange little band-aid. Um, I mean, I think we all agree we should definitely uh, try to find some more longer term funding solutions for the district. Um, but is it, you know, again, are people gonna vote no because, yeah, the fact that it's 18 years not permanent, is that bad enough for people to vote no? While on the other hand, you're saying that you wanna support teachers and all this stuff. I mean, if you're weighing the two, I think uh, more money is always good. So what, what harm could it do um, voting yes and providing a little more uh, funding for the school district for the next 18 years? Um, all right, we really are in the general discussion. Um, I know we uh, did do some uh, good discussion um, the last few minutes. So if anyone wants to raise new points, um, you know, anyone want to pitch uh, for and against this one, uh, feel free to do so now. I think uh, is any, go ahead, sorry. No, I, I didn't, I had like a throwaway comment where I'm just like, I mean, I think it's cool. Yeah. I think I, think I voted yes on it. Is anybody on the edge or, uh, yeah, is anyone in the middle? I remember reading the room. Uh, it's well, I, I'm voting in favor. Um, I think the, the rest of the room is voting in favor. So, is anyone voting no on this or leaning no and want to uh, make some points here? Going once, going twice, and we are moving on to Proposition K, affordable housing authorization. What we got here, 